What's going on, everybody? This is Trepang 2. If you've never heard of it, think of it as the spiritual successor to the Fear franchise with a heavy dose of Modern Doom injected into it. It's fantastic, and I'm so glad it came off a of backup. I want to give a shout out to all the runners coming in under estimate and everyone working behind the scenes who have made this GDQ just like flawless across the board. So many backup runs have gotten in. It's, it's been incredible. Um, I've been coming to GDQs for 10 years now, and this is like the best one, so uh, yeah. that's just so impressive to me. Um, before we hop into this and we explain some stuff, my couch can introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Maxi Lopes. I speedrun a lot of horror games, but this one uh, is the non-horror game that I speedrun sometimes, but it's so good. I'm gonna sell you on it, I swear. Hello, GDQ viewers. My screen name is Covert Muffin, and I have never played this game before. Well, let me tell you a thing about Trepang 2. Oh. Yeah, so it's uh, Trepang 2, Trepang Squared, depending on who you ask. This was developed by <laughs> Trepang Studios, which is also confusing. And if you're like, I've never heard of Trepang 1, is there a Trepang 1? There is. It's a side-scrolling 2D platformer about a sea cucumber, which is what Trepang means. It <laughs> has no relevance to this game at all, but uh, that's where the name comes from. So we're going to hop into this. We got some story stuff to, to break down as we go through a walking start. So we have a little cutscene we're going to skip, and then time will start after that. And three, two, one, go. Woo! All right, we are waking up as Subject 106. We are a super soldier experiment by the company known as the Syndicate. Or not really a company, but just a group known as the Syndicate. And we were captured by a different corporation known as Horizon and kind of locked away in Site 14, which is where we're waking up. Or handcuffed, and we don't really know what's going on, but we're just going to squeeze through here, get a little bit tutorial action. If you're looking at my keybinds and you're like, why is Interact on zero? That's really weird. That's just a mouse keybind I have. Uh, we need a lot of stuff, and Interact is actually a super low priority for us, so I put it on a mouse button where I can have other stuff on my keyboard. So here we're going to go into Cloak, one of our abilities. We're not going to see it too much, but it uh, brings up the UI on the center of the screen. So that little bar on the right that's filling up now, that is our stealth. And that will auto-regen over time. We don't really have to worry about it too much, like so we're barely ever going to see it. On the left-hand side, the one that wasn't filling up is what's known as focus, which allows us to go in slow-mo, bullet time, and it is very and very important for the run. But it doesn't auto-regen. You have to kill NPCs, mainly enemies, uh, to get that back up. So we're just going to crouch through here, and we're kind of coming up on the end of the walking section. But yeah, uh, we are a super soldier, and... Um, we are not the only super soldier, because we are 106. There are 105 that came before us, some of which we will see and encounter throughout here. Uh, and it's kind of the whole plot point of the game. And you may have heard this was like a stealth thing. Um, there's a lot of movement, some horror here and there, lots of blood, lots of guts. Uh, so we're going to pick up our first weapon. We're going to crouch right before it so that when we actually pick it up, we don't have an inspect animation. And then we're going to get moving very fast. So we're just popping some locks. And the white bar at the bottom is the stamina. If Maxi wants to kind of talk about that real quick. So stamina is actually super fun in this game. Uh, you're going to see BT use uh, a lot of slides and a lot of jumps after those slides. And that's going to take up stamina. But the fun thing about the stamina bar is that you can be regened by defeating enemies. So you're going to see BT kind of juggle, uh, kind of balance between fighting enemies and sliding around. And that yellow bar you see, so that yellow bar is what fills when you kill enemies, and that allows BT, I mean, you can see it right here. You, he's just sliding everywhere. He's moving. Yeah, so there's a lot of different movement tech that you can do. Ragdolls go flying everywhere. It's so much fun. Um, that uh, depending on the map layout, how tight the corridors are, they are very small here, very fear-inspired. Um, we're just doing a whole bunch of these slide cancels where you start a slide and then get out of it because you eventually lose some of the momentum you get from starting a slide. But you only really want to do that if you have infinite stamina, which is that yellow bar fading down over time. Otherwise, we want to kind of do these jumps to preserve momentum through the air and keep that speed. There's also what's known as long jumping, which is sort of the same as doing a slide into a jump. But uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later, making our way through the first level here. And we're going to encounter one of the other super soldiers. This is 105, who came to free us. Um, and in a tragic fashion, he played the game of Sudoku and lost. This is a really cool sword. 
everybody wants it added to the game, but uh, so far it's not. So here's his coin that says 105 on it. A fallen brother. I'm just going to give him a little pat on the back, and uh, we'll see him next time. So continuing on, we have the last half of the level, which gets a little bit trickier. A little bit of fighting, and then one of the harder skips to do, and one of the harder skips to learn uh, for people getting into it initially. So we're just going to take out these five guys using the shotgun, the most useful weapon in the entire game. We're going to pick up the assault rifle. You can only carry two weapons at any given time. It's pretty much always going to be the shotgun and some other weapon, depending on our needs. So we kill that guy to get him out of the way of the elevator. I'm going to try to grab one of these guys. <laughs> and we don't have any grenades, you can see that on the bottom right, but we can attach one to one of these guys, and if uh, we get lucky, no, okay. you can get rid of these shield guys, we're just going to slide into them, pick them around. <laughs> yeah, so something that's great about Trepang is that just like Fear, it's a spiritual successor basically, um, there's a lot of melee, so BT, <laughs> <laughs> BT is slide kicking, which makes the enemies kind of fall over and it, it makes them vulnerable. You also notice in some locations, BT is clearing out all of the enemies, where in some cases, he'll only kill one and then move on from there. And so there are certain areas where he does have to kill a list of enemies, which is commonly referred to in speedrunning as an arena. So we're taking out enemies here, not for like progression reasons, but uh, for a safety reason. Certain autosaves that you run through near fights won't actually trigger if there's too many enemies alive or too many aggressive enemies. That right. uh, checks for both. So. The game doesn't want you to get in a spot where you're dying and getting a save at the same point and just getting stuck in a cycle. And this is a very important auto save as well. So. Yeah. If we don't get a save here, which we should, there we go, nice. um, and we fail the trick, we go a little bit further back in the level, but we need to not go too far into this room. I'll let Maxi take over for a second. So BT is going to be doing some jump kicks, and these jump kicks can actually just kick walls to gain momentum backwards. That's what BT did to deload the room that he was in. Uh, and then he's going to, well, when he gets back to he's going to reload this uh, top floor part. This is a very hard trick. Yeah, so getting far enough away here actually deloads by hitting a certain trigger. And then, because that is now deloaded, he can use this to go out of bounds. And then wall kick, using the downward momentum, causes that to be inverted, giving him some additional upwards movement. Yeah, he's going to spawn this room up here. As long as I don't fall in the void, we should be fine to just go ahead and skip this big fight. And he's outside. Wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so like usually you don't really want to go in slow-mo if you can help it in a speed run because you're going slower. Why would you want to do that? But uh, because of the, the way the kicks work, they channel all of your momentum uh, the opposite direction that you kick. So if we mm -hmm. get a lot of speed going horizontally and then kick straight down, we're going to go flying straight up in the air. Trapang. <laughs> um, squared. 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 Or two. Possibly. Or two. Or two. Um, but yeah, going in the slow-mo allows you to get a lot of speed really quickly. Uh, we'll also see it in the next level. If you slide off of something, you get a lot of speed as well. So mixing the two, you can get a whole bunch and just kick straight up into there. Uh, there are five main levels basically in this game, and between each of the five levels, you come to the safe house, which is kind of like your hub. You can do optional stuff here. You can, there's a firing range. Uh, one of the first things it makes us do is pick up some cosmetics. So we're just going to apply that real quick. You're going to notice I have some bright red shoes on, which just makes kicking a little bit easier to see where my feet are placed. Uh, so these yellow markers on the map, these are our main objectives. We'll have green ones later on. We're not going to go to them. It's never important. Uh, oh yeah, we're going to come back here from time to time. We get one story exposition on the next time around, but after that, uh, we just basically come in here, get the story to progress, and to go back to the helicopter. So we're going to ride a little bit of a helicopter into the next part. So if you got some donations, I'm sure you do. You can yes, go ahead and read them. I do. I have a $500 donation wow. from Numbers saying, so excited to see Trepang uh, 2 at a GDQ. Also, come on, chat, let's get that boss rush incentive met. Give you an update on the Lost Judgment incentive. Super Amon, we've raised over 7,000 out of the 50,000, the boss gauntlet for Lost Judgment. That's the next game. We've raised almost 4,000 out of the 120,000 for that. Yeah, you're going to want to see that boss gauntlet. It is so, so cool. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. We also have a $50 donation from Swede Ola saying, currently traveling home from AGDQ, what better way than to watch more AGDQ while I wait for my flights home? Good luck on the run, BT. Yo, Swede, thank you so much. It was, it was fantastic to meet you, man. Safe travels. All right, here we are in the Pandora Institute. We're going to grab an autosave real quick, just so if we run out of the focus for slow-mo, we don't have to 
go kill something and find a way back. So we're going to slide off this chair. So basically, there's an invisible ceiling here that BT is going to try and avoid. You saw he went through the glass. Yeah, nicely done. Uh, went through the, the glass tile at the start, jumping out the helicopter. Well, that is still a hole that BT just went out of. And now that we're on the roof here, we are actually going to be progressing through the level to be able to go across here. Yeah, it's a bit of an invisible floor there that BT is able to get to, vault onto. So the extent of Out of Bounds and how far you can go with them in any given level is just how many triggers you can hit to progress the next level from Out of Bounds. Mm -hmm. So we drop down there to hit one and we get back to the roof. Um, there is still more Out of Bounds for this level, but right now we need to get back in bounds. So we're just going to walk back off here. The mantling system, vaulting system, whatever you want to call it, is really, really generous to you. You can grab stuff from very far away, but uh, yeah, this is one of the arenas where we're kind of going to take everything out. And there are visual indicators to show where the enemies are, but for the most part, listening is the better indicator. Uh, there is some tech with the shotgun that we'll explain a little bit later once we get through this level. Uh, for now, we're just going to kill off all these guys. If one's alive, that's fine. Yeah. So something else to mention about ar arenas is that B it's really important for BT to listen because that actually ends up helping them track down where enemies are because they always spawn in the same location, but they can move around. Right. So for most arenas, we're going to like get into the arena when the enemies are spawning. So as long as we know where they are, uh, we should be good to go. But there's a few of them that uh, they spawn in as we're running to it. So uh, we're going to actually go in slow-mo here to make throwing a grenade at these guys easier, which if a grenade hits somebody, it will instantly blow up instead of kind of lingering around for a little bit. All right, now we need to get to the other side before these guys start spreading out. Chuck a grenade. Oh, that was a great hit wow. right there. Yeah. Yeah, so if you haven't noticed, this game's really gory. <laughs> <Just fruit -punch laughs> it is the Sprosa successor to fear. So. It's, it's ketchup packets. Oh, there's one guy back here. And sometimes enemies can survive grenades and go flying across the map because of the ragdoll system, and it makes it really hard to track them. <laughs> uh, anyway, this breach charge is going to drop down in a random spot, and then sometimes it'll just teleport if you wait long enough. I didn't do this time. Okay. Yeah. So we do play on a down patch version of the game for two different skips, uh, which makes sense. They're kind of easy to find if, if you're checking all the corners, but uh, yeah, this one we just... Yeah, this one's pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're out of bounds. The stairs to nowhere. So BT's going to do some jump kicks. Let's get some height. Yeah, so this skip, um, I wasn't around when it was like being developed, but it went through several iterations. Uh, it's originally was known as the Mothman skip, which we will touch on him in just a little bit, but then it was like the Super Mothman skip, and then the Giga Mothman skip, and the Super Extended, and it's gotten so many names now, uh, it's pretty crazy. So we do another like trigger hit right there, mm -hmm. and we're going to wait for him to finish his dialogue, and that will let us slide off here and get to the bottom. Wee. Wee. <laughs> so we're going to load him down here, and we're going to avoid getting towards the cafeteria because there's some enemies over there that we don't want to aggro because we want to get an autosave here. So we're just going around the side. And we're going to slide off this way and pause in midair so this has a chance to load, get the autosave, and then we're going to do some sketchy jumps over the void. Why this stuff's out here, I don't know, but it's great. Oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, Got let's it. go. Sick. But we still have to get back in bounds, so uh, there are two triggers you have to watch out for. There's one that will open the elevator door, and then there's one that will uh, actually load in the next part. So you don't want to load in it before you get back in bounds, but there we go. Wow, nicely done. So a little bit about the story. Pandora Institute is all about finding a man named Dr. Emerson. Emerson. He was subject to 95. There's just you know, a few numbers before us, and he was kind of just researching a whole bunch of stuff. Um, doing evil sciencey things, and he created what was known as the Mothman, and uh, he actually let Mothman loose, being number sub subject 97. These are all different attempts at like super soldier programs and just really powerful weapons. So uh, we just passed where we'd meet Dr. Emerson, but he's actually dead, and now we're coming up to uh, this generator part. This is a little bit loud, a little headphone warning. Uh, so we go into this. But we have to destroy these four generators by throwing these like goopy, moldy, Resident Evil kind of enemies into them. Uh, so to be able to grab them quickly, we're just going to slide into them, and as they're being ragged all away, we're just going to grab onto them.
Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was that segment. It's kind of weird, but hey, here's Mothman. There's, there's a little bit of horror in this game. Just a tad bit. So we're just going to run away. Uh, we will be uh, turning around dealing with Mothman eventually, but not right now. We need to make our way to our elevator. Yeah, and this game's soundtrack, by the way, if you haven't oh. noticed, is, <laughs> is crazy good. Yeah. So good. Shoutouts to Brandon McKagan, or McKagan. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his last name, but uh, a fun little connection while I do this fun little trick. Uh, I ran Sprawl just a couple days ago for GDQ as well, and while Revel, the, the dev we had on commentary, did write all of the music for Sprawl, uh, they actually got Brandon that worked on this game's soundtrack to do the credit song for that. So a little bit of a weird crossover running both of these. Uh, but yeah, he's just waiting on the elevator like everyone at GDQ. He's <laughs> just hanging out with me. Uh, you're just supposed to survive this part, and uh, there's not a whole lot to do. But we're going to talk about the shotgun. So we typically have eight shots at max. Uh, if you have one shot or two shots left, they do more damage. So we're going to get it down to six, because we need to use four shots for some friendly NPCs. Uh, it'll make sense in a second, which will then get us down to two shots for Mothman, and we're just kind of waiting for this elevator, which is going to be a, a, a minute, minute and a half. So if you've got some emotions, you're free to read them. All right, we have a $25 donation from Gulch2 saying, happy to see Trepang come off backup. Good luck on the run, BT. We have a $25 donation from Thorcat that says, go Blood Thunder, speeding. And we have a $5 donation from Saju saying, Hey, BT, of course I had to donate during your run. Always a pleasure to see you doing what you love. This year, this event feels extra special, and this hits really ho close, close to home since I got di diagnosed with ovarian cancer recently. But life goes on, and here we are. You go, BT. Lovely couch you have there, too. Much love to Maxi and Covert. Many thanks to every single person involved in this very, very, very wholesome event. A shout out to everyone that just donated and that's donating and maybe you're not getting your comments read. But uh, Thorcat, you heard, that's my mom who watches uh, all of these events, so much love to her. I know she doesn't quite like these uh, action-packed, bloody games, but uh, we're, we're about to cause a little bit more. So we're coming out of the elevator. We're going to just take off four enemies. For whatever reason, this gets the next gate open a little bit earlier. And once we go through here, Mothman's going to pop back up, and we're going to try to do a quick kill. One shot, two shots, skip the cutscene, and we're done. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that, like, th there's a little bit of downtime in this run, uh, which is perfectly fine, but if you're getting into this, it's like a really great practice. So just like kind of run around, use kicks. You can do some crazy stuff. You can get up here in the helicopter. It's not going to kill you. Um, but I will do a, a shout out to myself real quick. If you want to learn how to run this category, the jump kicks look fun, which they are. Uh, a couple months ago, I did make a full game tutorial, breaking down all the movement, all the skips, uh, everything you need to know, showing you where all like, the little hitboxes are, because they are very, very tiny. They're invisible. Uh, so if you want to learn this, just go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash bloodthunder, and you can find that uh, pretty easily. And we'd also love to have you in the community. There are many other categories as well, which Maxi did run, if you want to kind of talk about his experience with this. Yeah, something amazing about this game is that uh, there's a cheat mode. So when you actually beat the game, you continuously uh, you know, unlock cheat cheats. Uh, so you get stuff like big head mode and wacky voice mode. Um, you get infinite ammo, infinite um, stamina. It's it's super super fun. It it makes it obviously, well, faster. Uh, but it just makes it, you know, just makes it super crazy. That's yeah. so cool. <laughs> yeah, so, the, the devs are awesome. This is a little bit of a uh, story device. It's our one exposition in the uh, the warehouse here. It's just here's a bomb in the basement. It, no big deal. Uh, but yeah, we need to cross this plane after a certain. Uh, Voice line's been read, otherwise it won't trigger if we just stand in here too early. Also, this corner is magic if you just jump into it, teleport you back to the middle <laughs> of the elevator. No idea why, but um, yeah, there's that. Uh, so we just have to go grab our next story objective, and then we're heading off to Jorvik Castle, so you got time for some more notations. All right, we have a $25 donation from Biotic Bash saying, BT, my fiance and I have loved watching you practice this run, and we're so pumped to see you showing it off. Also, to everyone else, remember to check if your company matches your donations. Every dollar helps towards this amazing cause. And we have a $50 donation from Hermanander that says, good luck on the run. 
We also have incentives open. Please be sure to select one of the incentives. The Super Amon boss fight. We've got almost $8,000 out of the $50,000. That's the next run. That's in Lost Judgment. You want to see that, I promise. Be sure to select one of the incentives after you put in your amount. Got time for one more? Yep. Uh, how about this $5,000 wow. donation Ooh. from Joe with no comment. But thank you so much for that, Joe. And also, we have a $25 donation from Defeationist that says, extra 55, if you can pronounce my name, thank you, AGDQ, as usual. I hope to see your $55 come in later <laughs> towards that Super Amon boss fight. How about that? So here we are in Jorvik Castle. This is the like big arena fight section of the game. We're going to be seeing this courtyard quite a few times. Um, we're going to kill off some enemies. This is one where they can kind of like spread around. So not only do we have the visual indicators being shown if we get close to them, I mean, we can hear them, but the snipers also have their blue tracking beams that can kind of point them out for you. They're not like super reliable, but will genuinely get you in the right direction. Once again, the soundtrack is just so amazing. Okay. So while the courtyard just got cleared, we have three more waves of enemies in this little spot. And we're not going to go right up to the door, because if enemies see you before they come out of where they spawn in, uh, they will just hide back there and make it incredibly hard to kill them and just waste a whole bunch of time. So we're going to hide behind this bush and then pop out and uh, get a little surprise. And chuck a grenade over here to get rid of these fire guys, hopefully. So Jorvik Castle is home to the occultist and the patriarch, who is their leader. Uh, he is yet again another subject that we will encounter here in a little bit. But the, you know, they're doing some wacky stuff over here as well. Our goal for this level is to find a man named Dr. Kramer. Find out what he was doing. He was over here studying the cultist experiments and whatnot. He was from Horizon, the big bad evil company that we're trying to stop. Um, so that's the first courtyard. Not too bad. We've got to wait for the helicopter to come in. And then one of the scarier tricks uh, we'll have to do after that. So we'll grab a safety save. Get some crazy kicks. Yeah, so something quick about the safety saves is that if BT is aggroed onto an enemy, the game just won't safety save. All right, I'm grabbing some extra backup ammo. Not that we really need it, but uh, I just love seeing the white gloves just covered in all sorts of debris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there was a shred of going up through the skylight, but... Uh, before we go and get the autosave, I'll show you. This wall down here just doesn't have collisions. So we're going to be coming back to that <laughs> real quick. That's the other trick that uh, got taken out of the game. Got, uh, got a down patch for it, unfortunately. That's understandable. Oh, yeah. But the reason that this part's so scary is we're going to do a bunch of kicks over the void, which means if you mess up one little kick, kick too late, kick too early, don't get the kind of height you need. You just fall down and... Uh... So that's kick one. Going to hit a trigger right through this wall, right at the corner. It is very, very small. I'm gonna double kick off this. Big kick up top. Another big kick. Okay, that's the scary part of this, but we're not quite done yet. We need to hit a few more triggers, so we're gonna load this in. And this is the biggest skip in the game currently. There is a way to make it even larger and basically skip the entire level, but even at a like segmented IL kind of level, it's not really being done because um, it's just that absurdly crazy. I'm gonna drop down here, hit one more, and then go back through that bottom half of the wall. Wow. That was that trick. That was Beautiful. incredible, dude. Flawless. So here we're going to pick up the bolt gun. Um, whoop, I actually swapped it back a little the too fast. The bolt launcher. Yeah, this thing's uh, <laughs> pretty crazy. Give me my ammo. There we go. So right now, it's not super useful. It has explosive rounds on it, so it's going to fire in a three burst and kind of like stick to stuff and then eventually it'll blow up. So if you don't hit an enemy right away, they usually just run past it. Um, but if it goes off, it is quite explosive. So we're going to take out some enemies, and then a helicopter is going to show up above us, and there's going to be three waves of enemies that drop out. But uh, we're going to stick some of these bolts right to the underside. It's <laughs> blood and guts go everywhere. So this package that fell down is the grenade launcher, which is 
a very, very handle, handy weapon to have for uh, a lot of the fights coming up. So once again, we just can only have two weapons. We're going to have the shotgun for just dealing uh, a lot of damage to single targets, and then something like the bolt gun or the uh, grenade launchers are secondary. So that's the second time we come through the courtyard. We will be back, but we need to go find uh, Dr. Kramer's research. That is, once again, the objective of this level. But uh, he, he may have heard us coming, so there may be a little bit of a surprise in store. So I haven't quite talked about the long jump system yet, but this is a good time. Um, so you can just do a slide and then a jump. That's a slide and a jump. But if you start a slide, hit sprint to cancel it, and then jump after it within a few frames, you can get a lot of speed and a lot of distance, which is known as a long jump. It also, for some reason, uses less stamina. So it's worth going for, even if you don't get it, it is quite tricky to time. Um, so if you kind of see me do these hops, and sometimes I go really, really far like that, and sometimes I don't go anywhere, it, going for long jumps. Uh, this is Dr. Kramer. So, well, Oh, no. <laughs> well, he was sent here to study what the cultists were doing. He was kind of a... Uh, he was kind of a precious resource to Horizon, so they said, you have to check in with us every 30 minutes, and also if your heart rate spikes too high for whatever reason, uh, you're just going to turn in some goop. So uh, he heard us coming, his heart rate spikes, and he's no longer here. So we're trying to download some information, see what he was up to, what the cult was, uh, was doing in this little section that looks quite like a little uh, fallout shelter. Downloading some stuff. Uh, but we're going to go through some waves, so the perfect time for some donations. Absolutely. We have a $10 donation from Dangerous saying, I had already given what I planned for this event, but then BT got another run in, so here's another 10. Good to see three of my good speed friends on cam together. Good luck, BT. You're an awesome dude, and I'm glad to see you're still kicking butt all these years later. Hey, Bobby, this dono goes to your choice. That would be Super Amon. We have raised almost $8,500 out of the $50,000 for that in the law's judgment run. Thank you so much, Dangerous. Yeah, great to hear from you, Dangerous. Yep. We have a the homie. We have yeah, a $14 yeah. donation from My Hero Zero saying lots of strawberry jam filled enemies in this game. <laughs> 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 so even though like one grenade should be enough to kill off all the enemies, sometimes they don't quite die and they go flying, or they stand up a little bit later, so I'm just kind of double checking. Uh, we're gonna have one more set spawn on this side. <laughs> the noise is so good. The sound design in this game is just top notch, and the music no, just slaps so hard. So we're going to have a sort of mini boss show up here. Uh, so we're going to get our shotgun down to two once again. We've got to kind of wait for a little bit. But I like to refer to this as the hallway of frog popes because of these little <laughs> fountains things. they got the, the two eyes, the big mouth, and the pope hat on. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why these are here, but every time I see them, that's what I think of. Behold the glory of Frog Pope. <laughs> you shall respect the Frog Pope. <laughs> so one thing He's we haven't really... dead already. <laughs> <laughs> one thing we haven't really touched on is like the voice acting. We're, we're kind of talking over it, but there's some incredible uh, voice acting. Spooky square coming right towards us. Oh, no. Oh, okay. It's something a little bit scarier. So this is the Enforcer, I'm just going to do two shots with high damage and then reload two more shots and then, Woo. he's having a bad day. So we're kind of near like the two-thirds way through this level and that's just enough for the big boss of this section to uh, come out to play. So here's the Patriarch. So it's true, you really are just like me. He's just like me, for real. Are you any better? So he's another subject, um, subject 91, a little bit older. And uh, he kind of infers that this is not the first time they've sent another subject to come after him. You know, meaning that uh, he's killed many before, and he's fully prepared to kill us as well. I don't know why he just doesn't do it right there, but hey, we're going to go track him down, give him a little bopping. But first, we need to pick up an upgrade that we will not use at all in this entire run. Nope. This is the dual wield serum. A uh, little bit of a funny cutscene. It's going to pump this in our arm, and now we can carry two guns. The power of science. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, we can't skip that even though we don't need it. There is potentially some really crazy tech if you wanted to get like a segmented run going where you dual wield grenade launchers and then do kick boost off of those which it's 
not only sounds crazy, but is actually crazier than it sounds. Um, yeah, we're just going to take out some more enemies. So we can chase after the Patriarch. And they're just all around the place. Okay. So we actually play on Shadows set to medium, so that when these guys spawn in here, we can see them. And that they're taken care of. The grenade launcher makes really quick work of these basic enemies just popping out. Some over this way. One more. Oh, we should see some up here. <laughs> it's like some yeah, somehow he survived that grenade despite being thrown like twenty-five feet. And that is that fight. So we're gonna pick up the bolt gun, swap it back out. Luckily there's one here. We're actually gonna get an upgrade for it just in a second. But we need to be on this platform. We're just waiting once again for like an audio trigger. Yeah, so once she says kill the patriarch, you can go on this little thing and uh, it's going to start going down. You can't go back off of it. And sometimes st stuff starts floating. It's very weird. Uh, but I'm sure many game devs will tell you that having moving platforms and, and stuff like that is uh, very hard to program. So we'll see <laughs> if we have any friends come and join us. Maybe not. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> Strike a pose. Whoa. Whoa. He actually kind of survived. <laughs> He's just going to take a nap. Nap time. Nap time. So through this door on our right, we're going to pick up the weapon part. And on our left, we're going to go to a weapon chest, which we've not interacted with at all, and we'll never do it again. But this will let you swap the parts that you have on your weapon. So we're going to go from the explosive mode to the penetrator mode, which turns into an actual bolt launcher. So we're going to shoot one. It's like the nail gun. It's going to stick them to walls. And it's pretty much a one shot for most of these enemies. Uh, we're going to do some jump kicks to kind of get past going sh like all the way around the burning library. Just jump kick Nice. Here. See, that one's so cool because everything's on fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So the one time cloaking really, really helps is during this part, because there's three tripwires that will do a lot of damage to you very, very quickly. So we're going to cloak through those two, let it regen, and then go to the last one. Enemies can set it off a little early, which is nice if they do, but not big deal if they don't. And right down this hallway is the Patriarch, who, uh... I love this part. <laughs> He's got a really cool fight. Uh, usually there's three waves, but we're going to try to do it in two. And, uh, yeah, it's... It's really silly. So VT's got the uh, the penetrator, the, rate, the the nail gun out. He's gonna pop him twice in the head here. Oh, maybe three times. Yeah, three times. Nice, nice. nice. That's gonna ensure the two cycle. Yeah, so he's gonna run away for a little bit. And we gotta kill off some enemies. They're just skiing across. Once we kill enough, he's gonna pop back up right here in the middle. Three more. <laughs> One, two, three. Nice. Yeah, let's yeah. go. Nice fight. I just love how they like stay in there, yeah. and then he comes to the second phase, and they're still there. Yeah, so for whatever reason, shooting him with six bolts to the head phases him in the second phase instead of the third, and just ends the fight early, which is fantastic. Now we're going into uh, one of the more interesting levels. Not going to spoil anything yet, but uh, this one's a little bit different than the others so far. Mm -hmm. Going to run back out. So the only objective going into Site 83, which is where we're going, is a not really a subject that we're chasing down, but an object, kind of like an SCP sort of thing, uh, referred to as Object 83. So there's no cutscene way to start, and uh, while this is a friendly NPC, it will still give us stamina. <laughs> and uh, Poor I guess man. the rest of the crew didn't really like him because they just don't react at all. Oh, watch this climb, by the way. This is going to be incredibly impressive. Wow. So if you want to talk about the mask on, Maxie, while well, I do this. The mask? Yeah. Do you know about it? The mask? 
There are characters oh, wearing a mask. You cheap mode runners don't know about the mask. The mask? <laughs> uh, yeah, so the mask actually, while you're wearing it, you can see kind of the PNG around the screen. That will slow down your top movement speed, so everything becomes a little bit harder. Uh, I didn't even know. What? <laughs> By how much? Uh, it's, it's like a little bit. I think usually you can go like 15 meters a second top speed, and it takes you down to like 13 or so. Okay. Uh, which doesn't Aww. sound like a whole bunch, but when you're doing some of these skips and some of the crazier yeah. skips you could possibly go for, that makes a world of difference. Right, uh, yeah. There's some really, really crazy segmented strats for this level um, that obviously we're not going to be able to show off. Even if I spent the entire 55 minutes on this alone, I could not actually get it. So we're going to grab here. Ooh, a little too far. Can I save this? Let's see. Oh. Yeah, and like remember, Chad, um, the the height that or the velocity that BT is able to build by doing those kicks on the ground is dependent on how quickly BT is moving downwards because it just completely flips the vertical vector and causes him to to apply that upwards instead. Yeah, this time for sure. The soundtrack is just so good, dude. It gets even better. Oh, oh no. This is really difficult, by yeah, the way. This is a hard skip. I think something else to mention just in general that BT was telling me about before the run is that a lot of these triggers for like deloading and loading the level aren't actually like giant planes. They can be like the size of like a metaphorical basketball, if you mm -hmm. if you can imagine. So like a lot of these tricks in general, not just the climbs, which you can actually see, but then also hitting these triggers uh, to be able to get access to certain areas out of bounds and then be able to get back in bounds can be incredibly precise. Nice. Okay. okay. Then we're just going to hit a trigger against this wall. And then once we get some stamina back, we're going to go flying off in this direction. Wee! Bunk. <laughs> Luckily, there's no <laughs> fall damage. We're going to hit a autosave and a load. Now we need to get back in bounds. So uh, we go over here and trigger it. A little bit of a light switch. And then we need to get over here so we can kind of jump, and eventually it's just going to warp us back in bounds. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so if you, if you fail the like, uh, stealth segment here, you get teleported back to this spot. The mask my, comes my off, mask. which is really great. It tells us to not run, but we're not going to listen to what? it at all. Yeah, we're speedrunners. What do you expect? These doors are really just not wanting to open. So we're going to crouch because we're going to see this giant black cloud ahead of us. That's what caught us before. And because of how we get into the level, it's always going to be kind of in front of us. We can outrun it to a certain degree, but uh, it's just kind of taking up the whole hallway, so we can't get past it. Just going to sneak to the sign. Don't want to get spooky face jump scared again. And all of the corridors in this level are really, really tight and inter like intertwined. So it's really hard to go fast with the different slide mechanics and whatnot. But we're just going to kind of do some spam slide cancels. Oh, yeah, that was sick. <laughs> okay. And now we have been teleported because of Object 83 and its shenanigans. Welcome to the back rooms. <laughs> These are indeed what the game calls the back rooms. As many of you may know, this is an alternate like dimension that it's warped us to. Liminal spaces, all of that fun stuff. Uh, this is because of Object 83, which is like releasing all of this weird gas, which is making uh, the people studying it that found it originally go aggressive and, and get angry. And uh, it started warping different teams that came in to check it out to the back rooms. So we're going to see it a couple of times. For now, we're just going to go down towards the green lights and uh, warp back in. Anomalous activity detected. <laughs> <laughs> level has a, a lot of uh, lever pulling. So we're going to turn that one off. But uh, so yeah, all the weird stuff going on in this level is because of Object 83. We're going to do a short skip through the elevator shaft here. Oops. Towards the uh, bottom of this elevator shaft, BT's going to pause. It's going to stop his momentum. 
Yeah, so when you pause when you're falling down, you just like stop all momentum, and then when you unpause, you can just hold forward and just slip right over the gate. If you fall all the way down, it's not a big deal. You can just do another like series of jump kicks to get over it, but mm -hmm. uh, once we've triggered this, we're gonna go back into the back rooms. Uh, and yeah, so this is like where all the horror stuff for the game is kind of located. Instead of being spread out, more like the, the Fear franchise where it kind of mixes it in between, this kind of saves it more for one level in particular. There's a little bit here and there, you know, with Jorvik Castle and the Enforcer and whatnot, yeah. but... Uh, and I will say, like, there's a lot of side quests that you can do, yep. the side missions, mm -hmm. um, and those also have some really, really cool spookier content. Mm -hmm. I think everyone's favorite side mission is the really creepy house with the TV basement. If you've yeah. played the game, you probably know what I'm talking about. Yeah, if not, it sounds really crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely recommend picking up this game. So if you want to run it, we are more than welcome to have you. You can run so many different categories. Uh, but if you just want to play casually, you know, support the devs. And here we come to the final arena of this level. That's Object 83 over there, that big glass pillar. And there's a... A little bit of a fight that goes with it, but nothing too seriously. We don't have to fight it itself, so we're just going to pick up the grenade. And now we need to hit three different flares, which will trigger like a little slow-mo effect when we get near them. And that will start the fight. Let's get the autosave. Okay, I missed the one. It's probably the one up top. Yeah, nice. It's so now the enemy spawn in predetermined elevators. Uh, there's a health bar for Subject 83. Like I said, we don't fight it at all, so I don't quite know why it has a health bar, but uh, just going to check a couple of grenades over here. <laughs> Make sure they're all dead. <laughs> just a couple for good measure, you know. Yeah, so after you kill off one elevator of enemies, then it's going to take a little bit for the fuse boxes to actually uh, let you interact with them. This white lightning is going to come around and get rid of these shadow people. Honestly, I, I don't know what's going on with this part of the story, but uh, yeah, as we go through this, we got some time for donations. Absolutely. We have a $5 donation from Breezebeat that says, Hey, BT, this game looks a lot like Absolov. <laughs> Awaiting your return to that uh, game soon. It looks nothing like Absolov. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, like, what? Be best of luck on the Trepang 2 run. You got this. And we have a $250 donation from Potato Maximus that says, Potato needs more AGDQ. We're almost $9,000 out of the $50,000 for the Super Amon boss fight in Lost Judgment, which comes up right after this. We'll keep it going. All right. Uh, we have a $100 donation from Pollard saying, I have nothing to say but hooray. Oh, wow. Is that the new one? All right. Uh, splitting this donation to the Lost Judgment Incentives and the Baldur's Gate 3 all-axe run because a bonus run means a longer AGDQ. Keep up the fantastic work, everyone. And we have a $25 donation from Bean saying, here are five tickets to the $5 train for the Lost Judgment Incentives and the $2 million goal for Baldur's Gate. Let's keep GDQ going as long as possible. Remember, the Lost Judgment incentives get met first, and if we meet those, then you have more time to get to Baldur's Gate 3, that all-axe run. We've raised over 92000 out of the 250000 for Baldur's Gate 3. So that was the last wave of enemies that we had a fight. Uh, we can stand on top of this group of shadow people, so as soon as it's done, we just fall right on top of it. And if you remember that area that I kept failing at the beginning of the level, uh, hopefully you did, it was just couple minutes ago, we will be seeing it again very shortly, even though we're at the end of the level. So we're going to go over here, and now that everything has been flipped on, we can fire the laser. You can die here, but uh, the enemies tend to just have Stormtrooper aim and just miss every bullet. Um, so if you pay real close attention, you, you might see that beginning part of the level. It's a little hard to notice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we never hit the deload trigger for it, so it just stays permanently on the map. Luckily, it doesn't cause any lag or any issues like that, but... Uh... It do look funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a helicopter just flying around. Yeah, so we blew up Object 83, and we're getting rescued. And at this point, they're like, all right, you have enough information, you've gathered enough intelligence, we're ready to go fight the big bad Horizon CEO, uh, who's also a former subject, Subject 78. Very old subject. Um, he started... Horizon starting all this testing on different stuff, and uh, his investors pulled out, and everyone's like, oh, you're kind of a bad guy, so uh, we're going to turn on you. But uh, Horizon HQ is definitely the hardest level overall. It doesn't have the hardest trick. I think that's late 14, and that, uh, that mm. first big out-of-bounds we did. But uh, just an overall, there's three big skips that we have to do, and they're all a little bit spooky. 
but it has some of the greatest music. And in a game with great music, I don't say that lightly. The yeah. track for this and uh, towards the end is just, it's so good. I'm gonna pop up in the sewers. We're just gonna kinda do some kicks. All teams in position. 106, once you get those bombs planted, we'll begin the assault. Yeah, we're not going to get those bombs planted. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, BT and Yo, going to go nice. out of bounds. That's a nice jump there. So I'm hitting an autosave, but I'm doing it backwards, because if I do need to load it back in, um, the save does place you the way that you're facing it, so it's just a little bit nicer. So I do it backwards. Nice. Nice. The trick's not done yet. We need a... Like I think Muffin was describing earlier, yep. it's basically like a basketball size invisible box over here that we need to hit to load in the next part. It is very, very tiny. Oh. It felt close though. It always does. There it is. Nice. Yeah. Wow. And that warps us back up to the elevator a little bit further on in the level. The music starts kicking in. And uh, making our way down towards the actual Horizon building. Take out an enemy just to get a little bit of more momentum. And we're just full speed towards the end of this game. So we're actually going to drop off the grenade launcher. As much as I love it, uh, there's something a little bit better for the end of this level. Somehow we have a breach charge that we just never picked up. So we're going to pick up the minigun. This thing is amazing. Uh, but we're just going to hold on to it for a little bit to use the shotgun to run past all of them. So we don't care about any of these nerds. We just want the CEO, Anton Lazar. And he's at the very, very top. So this is like lobby skip. Uh, this is also a, even smaller than a basketball thing to hit. We're going to skip a big fight here in the lobby. Do some kicks up top. Now we need to hit a small spot when we drop down here. Okay. Thank Yo, you. Guys. Did that work? That, yeah. that was wow. so fast. Like, that, that, was, was that was super fast. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you can tell by the way that like it kind of <laughs> lags for half a second. Uh, we're just gonna skip this elevator. That guy was flabbergasted at how fast you did that skip. <laughs> yeah. On to one of my favorite tricks, and the music is just this is my favorite song. Just what the fuck are you doing off my back in order? Hey, we're speed running out here. Horizon is finished. There's nothing to die here for. <laughs> so a big kick to get out of bounds. Yeah, this is a, a super cool sequence of kicks here. So I could use a little bit of focus in slow-mo, but uh, I need to save it kind of for this jump. Uh, it's just the trickiest one to land on. A couple of more scary kicks to go through, and then we are pretty much home free with this level. One kick there, one kick back there. Oh, nice. Wow. Now all we have to do is avoid a trigger that will load in the next part and keep us out of bounds. We're just going to go around that and load in the next part with us in bounds. And uh, on to Anton, who's over there in his bed. He's trying to upload his brain um, with all these jars. This fight is really, really <laughs> just rough. Luckily, the brain in the jars is over there. I'm just going to use the minigun to blast it. And that's that boss. Let's go. So he's not looking too great. Um, I'm kind of put him out of his misery. And, well, you may think, oh, he's the big bad of the game. Surely that's where, where things end. Um, maybe they do, maybe they don't. Uh, but we're going to go back to the headquarters one more time for a round of celebration. It's going to be a good time all around. Upload canceled. You got time for a couple more donations here? All right, we have a $50 donation from Chad saying, make big number go up. And a $25 donation from Mad Cyclist, Mike Cyclist maybe, saying 2 million hype? 
We're not there yet, but dress for the job you want, really, honestly. Uh, we are at $1.6 million, $26,000. We have a couple of incentives. We have crossed the $9,000 mark out of the $50,000 needed for Super Amon in the very next run, Lost Judgment. We are a little over 92000 to get Baldur's Gate 3 all acts. And once we get $2 million overall, we'll also get Baldur's Gate 3 any percent. Yep, so this is coming on like the final part of the level they've betrayed us. Oh no, how could they? Didn't see it coming at all. Um, but yeah, this is a, a great cutscene with a great music drop, so I, I think we're just gonna let this one play. Very Doom inspired, I would say. That hits so good. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. <laughs> so if they betrayed us, they are going to terminate us and uh, go on with Subject 107. But we're going to break the cycle with a handy dandy pistol. Any smilers in chat? That was a. I'm going to try that. There we go. So this level is a little bit rough because we're going to go for a pretty risky strat. Uh, I'm a little bit underestimate so far. Uh, and if we mess it up, we'll go for a little bit more safety. But we're going to get up here to explode this door. That's supposed to be our way down to the bombs. We're going to try to blow that up and break the cycle. Uh, that was the reference back in Safe House 2. It's like, oh, hey, this thing's here in the basement. Wink, wink. Um, we're going to take care of an enemy, grab a shotgun, and try to make our way out of bounds. But yeah, there's no checkpoints for the stuff that we're about to do. So we uh, have to do it again. We have to do it all again. Let's see how this goes. This one's a little bit tricky. Need a lot of speed, need a really good angle. Uh, and have to double kick off a wall. Some music. Good... Not quite. Yeah, so BT's trying to not hit either of these pillars, if you can help it. I just want to go straight up and then kick off this wall to kind of get behind his rocks. Nice. nice. All right, time for the risky thing. So there's 107, the big boss of the, the game, but there's also a just end game trigger over here that uh, we just hit it. Oh, oh that was so close. I will go up for the backup, but yeah, there's a, a very small trigger there that will just instantly end the game. Uh, but we get this one again, so you got some donations as we work our way back over there. Or we can just let this play again. I'm, I'm down. All units be advised. Subject 106 is active. Team adventures are ineffective. Never gets old. <laughs> no. So unfortunately now it's a, it's a hat face, you know, like... <laughs> 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 When I was grinding attempts at back home, I used to put like a WR for world record. And it's always kind of embarrassing when you do that and you don't actually get a good skill. <laughs> but, uh, it's a good way to lose a run. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You showboat a little bit and you do the. Yeah. So yeah, sit down, little bro. But yeah, you can do some fun kicks while you wait. Um, unfortunately, there's no way out of this early. But there's that one crazy kick out of the, the cave wall. And instead of going to the right, we're going to go up to the left. Nice. And wow, nicely done. Yeah, good kicks, good kicks. So I want to wrap around the long way this time. A little scenic route. Show off both strats. This one's kind of awkward because you have to gain uh, some height on some really weird invisible platforms. Kill 107, and you get this big, awesome cutscene with the bomb going off and everything. 
But uh, yeah, for some reason, there's a trigger out there that instantly ends it, gives you a link to a Discord saying, hey, mission accomplished. You can go back to the safe house and play on harder difficulties. You can check out all these different uh, horde modes and whatnot. But that's been Trepang 2. Thank you guys so much for having me. Uh, getting this off backup was incredible. Being able to run two event, uh, two different runs of this event uh, is crazy. But if you're looking for more of this, uh, like I said, I have the tutorial on YouTube, youtube.com slash bloodthunder. All of my speedruns on there, tons of FPS, horror, puzzle games, and I tend to stream every day that I can. 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. is my go-to time, but sometimes it differs, so you can find me at twitch.tv slash bloodthunder. Follow these two amazing gentlemen back here, Cover Muffin and Maxi Loeb, awesome runners, great friends. Uh, and shout-outs to, once again, all the tech staff that have made this event amazing, everyone in the crowd for being awesome, uh, and everyone at home for donating.